so you descend in and drop down among all of the bull kelp, which of course is you know, beautiful and will undulate with the waves. And you look around and assimilate the area and you'd see tons of rockfish. As it was thousands upon thousands in a region and you would find piles and mounds of sea urchins, purple primarily out in the straits, and they would be piled up five and six feet high in great big mounds. And as far as you could see, there'd be in the sandier areas, sand dollars just stacked up one upon each other. And so it was eye candy as far as the eye could see. I mean, you, you couldn't put a finger down without touching some living creature somewhere. When you see litter or you see some sort of industrial waste on the, on the soil, people see it and yeah. react to it, and we wouldn't tolerate it in the same way. And scuba diving, you're, you're the eyes of the community, because I look out and I see this beautiful vista. And, and you don't see the beer cans and it the bottles. And, the... Yeah. and scuba divers are a funny sort. We actually, we're, we're great cleaners and picker-uppers of the most part, because if it's fairly new garbage, we're picking it up and putting it in our goodie bags to take yeah. back. Uh, the Puget Sound area here, we've been diving. I've been, we've been diving here about 10 years ago. I've actually been diving since I was about nine years old. My dad was a Navy diver and had all the dive gear, so he would throw the water, throw it in the water, throw us in the water, and tell us when you can't breathe, come up. <laughs> Things have drastically changed yep. in, <clears throat> in 30 years. There's getting to be less fish. And the fish aren't as big. Lingcod used to be very large, an amazing species, and you would see five and six footers regularly, and now we're excited if we see a two to a three footer. We're seeing more tumors on fish. I never saw a tumor one as a kid, but you'll see growths on fish now that you didn't see, especially the bottom feeders. Fish counts are down overall. Uh, fish sizes are down quite a bit, especially things with the, the rock fish. They were really heavily fished for quite some period of time. The water quality has taken a big hit, and there are days where you can't even see your hand in front of you because it's so thick and stringy and green. Mm. And the water is really actually thick. Or we would go out to look for the black cod, and just because they school and they're beautiful, and there weren't any. There's absolutely none. And the China rock fish and the other varieties like that, the counts were very, very low. Things like uh, kelp cranelings used to be everywhere there was kelp, you'd find these beautiful neon yellow finned fish with spots on them. And again, you'd find two or three and here and there. And the amount of bull kelp had gone down dramatically as well. Yeah. So where it was like, is this even the same place I used to dive? We see more oil slicks on the water now. We see far more plankton blooms throughout the year. And there are times when we know the octopus and the wolf eels won't make it for the season. We know some are going to die because they can't get enough oxygen from the water because the plankton is taking up all of the light and the activity. And they just, they just don't make it from year to year. So we're not seeing eight to ten year old giant Pacific octopus anymore. And when we do, we're all excited, but they're few and far between. The one thing that not everyone realizes is that because we live in the Northwest and we're so close to the water, that everything we do on land affects what we do to that water. And whatever happens in the Puget Sound affects our lifestyle on land. Uh, if you are heavy with the use of pesticides and uh, Roundup and things like that, they will make their way from the ground into the water. It kills off the kelp. When you kill off the kelp, you kill off the fish. You kill off the fish, and suddenly you don't have eagles nesting in your backyard anymore. <clears throat> One of the things with car washing is, is you wash your car on the street, and the water doesn't just disappear. You know, it, it goes down a drain, and the drains in the northwest drain directly into creek beds and directly into the sound. And so you're dumping soap 
car wax, um, probably the most caustic, nasty stuff around is the stuff that people spray on their wheels to make their wheels all shiny and clean. It gets rid of all the brake dust. It, the stuff has got a pH that is just phenomenally low and it, it burns your hands when you touch it. So clearly it's not good stuff. Um, puppy poop bags are your friends. <laughs> I don't care if it is a Safeway grocery bag or if it's, you know, a pooper scooper bag or whatever you poop bags are your friend. <laughs> and and it actually adds to the fecal levels in the water just like people poop does when we have overflows from our sewage systems and it overflows and then we can't dive here, we can't eat shellfish here, we can't do anything and it's fecal levels. So people poop, puppy poop, it's, you know, just pick up the puppy poop. <laughs> I am an eternal optimist that people will eventually begin to understand just what amazingness they have in their hands.